Hello and welcome to a brand new series on my channel, which is called What Would You Do? Where we're going to investigate some of my matches, some of your matches, and ask the question, what would you do in this situation? So we'll be going through a game that I had on stream the other day where I dropped 19 kills. And we're going to be questioning you, testing your knowledge, and seeing if you can actually figure out what the right answer is. Now, of course, there's many different ways to play out a round and play out a clutch, and it really comes down to risk factor, guessing which will give you the best chance of winning and then trying to execute it. Now, I did do two other videos like this before on my channel. However, I am switching up the format a bit. It is a little bit different, so hopefully you enjoy. Let me know what you think because I think I'm pretty excited to do this, but if everybody hates it, then I'll do something else. And we are also going to go over every round of the match, so even the rounds where I died or made mistakes, it's important to know why I made those mistakes and what we should change next time, as well as adding to how we should counter the other team and how we should actually play out those other rounds based on what we already know from the previous rounds. Fuck down. Now sure. let's get into it. Pick up the drone, not the... Okay, I gotta get info. He might hop out. If I hop out, I'm dead. It's... If he hops out, I'm dead. It's whatever. Here we have our first situation. It's a 2v5, half your team died in the first minute of the round, but now you have a couple options. You can try and fight that guy that you just droned out in piano because he's alone. You do have your Grim B launcher, or you can go down to mining and hop in through the mining window, or go to the roof and try to bait on the roof for some kills. What are you gonna do? Getting run out on and clapped by another defender wasn't on the list of options. However, in this situation, I would have tried to get piano control by being off the guy in piano and then rappelling into the building. Once you get into piano, they're going to start really pushing up on you. They want that space back and that's control that isn't good for them. You could go up to the skylight and bait. That's what a lot of people probably would have thought, which is not a terrible option, but you're then relying on them to actually peak the skylight, which is not only an unfavorable gunfight for them, but it also is control that you don't have. You don't have any sort of control, so there's no reason for them to need to peak you. Once you're in piano, that's where you can stem control. You can push white stairs. You can push into shop. You can find those picks a lot easier. So pushing into piano would have been the best option, but we got ran out and we got slammed, and that's round one. Whiskey's good. It's all clear over here. Just careful brown stairs. Are, they are upstairs as well. Drone up. Fuck, it was getting slow. And here we are in a 2v5 again with record-breaking time of only 40 seconds this time. So, you've droned out coat. You know it's clear. You can either push into... What's that room called? VIP? Yeah, VIP. You can either push into VIP, try to fight some people over there, or you can take coat and try to sneak in behind them. What are you going to do and why are you going to do it? Push it up. Oh, close to your future. Honestly, either option isn't bad here, but the push onto VIP is going to be a guaranteed kill, plus you're also working with your teammate. So having the crossfire in multiple angles with your teammate will hopefully allow you to get a couple of those killbacks. Let's say you kill two people VIP side or even three, then you're gonna be in a 2v2 or a 2v3, and that's a much more winnable situation. If you go coat and let your teammate die, you're gonna be worse off if he actually does get clapped by the swarming defenders. So playing with your teammate and working with your teammate is always gonna be the best option. Unfortunately, my teammate did get a little poopy stinker dropped on him before I got the chance to help. So in this situation, the choice didn't actually matter. Uh, if, if it played out differently, it could have made the difference, but in this situation, it just didn't. But we still made the right choice regardless. Knowing what we know now what are we going to pick as an operator for the next round do we pick a blitz and get extremely aggressive do we pick a support operator and maybe drone our teammates a little bit more to help them stay up do we bring a finca to give them those extra heal boosts so that way when they're in the building in the first 20 seconds they might have a better chance of surviving what do you think here, I decided on the Finca. Really, there's not a wrong option in this circumstance, but you definitely want something that can assist your team while they're pushing in really quickly. So a Finca, a Doka B, something with a global ability that can help everyone is a great option here when you're solo queuing. Plus with the LMG, I might be able to frag out, take out multiple people at the same time, and I also have grenades to destroy things and make plays if I need to. The other thing I wanna do on this round is really slow it down. Because my team has played super aggressive every time, it has not worked once, but they are still calming 
and working together, I can say, hey guys, let's just really slow down. Let's bait for those kills. They're playing aggressive, so let's capitalize on that. So coming out of spawn here, I'm gonna be coming out really slow and very wary of that spawn peak so I can stay alive and potentially even get a kill. That's a one of the easiest ways to put the round in your favor off the start if you are playing these insanely aggressive individuals. Wow, that was the worst timing ever. Still got him though. You just gotta, like people that play hella aggressive, you just need to play a little slower. Like I'm glad my team's staying alive. Warden's top, cocktail, top plate. I could try to jump in skylight, but it actually looks kind of free. So you drone out Cocktail and see it's barricaded and there's no rotate hole there either. Freezer is also reinforced off and there's nobody playing in it. You're in a 3v4 situation, what are you going to do here? The first option is just jumping in the skylight now that you know it's clear. You can look shop side, you might be safe from pillar, and it might give you some control that can lead to some kills. Or you can continue droning, actually find a target, and then work your way into the building to hunt him down. The last option is telling your teammates it's clear, waiting on the roof, maybe baiting for a couple kills, and getting your teammate to actually come with you to come buck the floor. For me, I'm jumping in the skylight. We have the man disadvantage. I've already wasted a minute of the round, and getting some picks is really going to help my team. It will also take the pressure off what they're doing by collecting this control up top that they're giving me for free. It is a bit of a risk, but when you're solo, you have to take risks in order to apply pressure and get those kills. So I'm going to jump in the skylight, look for a couple kills, hopefully take out some cameras, and cause a distraction while trying to survive all at the same time. Getting my teammates to actually get to the roof is probably more difficult than just playing the game with no teammates at all, because... That's just never going to happen. They're not going to listen, most likely, and it's a risk in itself trying to do that, even though they have been working pretty well with me. And then also, there's no reason to really drone further. You have the information that you need in order to hop in and contest the only other way they could be peeking you from, which is the shop, and most people aren't contesting Skylight from the shop anyway. Thanks to a couple whiffs from the enemies, including one of my friends, Jazzman, who got absolutely pooped on as the warden in Pillars, you're in a 1v1 situation. The last one is called out around that mining and dining area. So what are you going to do now? Are you going to jump down Pillars and try to fight him? Are you going to go for the reading? bomb site and try to get a plant down are you gonna walk down at red stairs and try to fight him in that mining dining area are you gonna drone more do you even have a drone i don't know maybe probably not it might be somewhere on the map it might still be in the freezer actually you are getting spotted by a scan so they do know where you are so that should also factor into your decision what are you gonna do and why Honestly, there's not really a bad option in this circumstance. You still have a minute 30 on the clock. Droning is a perfectly valid way to do it. You just want to make sure you either get out of cover from that valve cam so you don't get shot through the floor or actually take it out first. So you have time to look for it. But for me, I'm just going to drop down pillars, get rid of that valve cam once I find it, and then work into the bomb site to try and get the bomb down because there's only a couple angles that I can actually get peeked from while I'm in it. Luckily, he shoots from the site for some reason, which actually reveals his position, allowing me to push in off that info. Oh my holy God, fucking God. shit. I'm a little worried about pillar. At the same time I want to be able to hold shot. It's A still in bathroom repair. One's up top white, top white, going in it's cocktail. In the freezer, maybe. Freezer, in freezer, in freezer. I won't make it Fuck boys. Oh shit. Dude. So on the first defense, they did a pretty nice take. It wasn't overly aggressive, but the setup was just lackluster. It was late, and it ended up with me being in a rough position where I just got smoked. So nothing you can really do about that besides just be more prepared for the next round. And this time, I have the number one solo queue operator in the game, Smoke. So how could anything go wrong? You can see this time I'm set up a lot quicker. I'm actually in a spot off the bomb site where I'm able to contest some of these entry points. That way they can't just take that space for free, and we actually have a little more space and a little more room to breathe before they completely collapse on the bomb site like they did last round. Where's the bucket? Pilot. At this point, you know that pretty much the entire map is clear, including the basement since you started bottom white stairs off the start. So that means the only places they could be at this point is on the piano repel, on the hatches or on the skylight or taking red stairs to some degree, whether it's the whole staircase or just the top from the hatches. You are down in man count, but you know that one is already in shop based on the sounds of the gun shooting. You know somebody is in there firing into sight a little bit. So what are you gonna do in this case? Do you wait back, play passively, play that SMG at that range, or do you make something happen? Do you take control of the round and get aggressive? 
I see that he shoots this Kiba, meaning he is definitely top red stairs or new balcony breaking that Azami barricade. So by smoking off the breach on red, they're not able to hop through into ticket while I get aggressive through piano to make a play onto shop. And because Smoke's Lodo is so good in that close range, I'm gonna have that close range adva advantage to hopefully take one out. Piano repel, like stage repel. Yeah, one's on uh, Zin Cigar. Advised, op four has located a bomb. He's on the piano, he's on the piano. He's on the piano? Oh my god, I cannot see him. Still here, still here, still here. I'll be crushed. Can you help me? Vicky? He's off to the piano now. He's bringing bomb couches. He's against your wall, Smoke. He's in, Freezer. Long bar, we traded. And of course, you always want to get on the cameras to assist your teammates after you die, especially when you have a Valkyrie. Otherwise, you're literally just trolling and you're stupid and you're dumb. Get on the cams. One Zuna drop red. Let's see, yeah, this one red. red. Drone new hatch. You can shoot this rook. Nice. The other one's on the roof. Drop new. Drop, drop new gosh. hatch and shop. Red. Both, Both red door. Bad. Both shop door. One new hatch and one red. Red vault, red breach, and one swinging new. Last one's red breach. Okay, so piano. Nice. Small big window. So there's a Cali outside bakery and another enemy outside small bakery window. Do you peek the Cali and try to kill him as he's trying to look for that rook? Do you run over and try to revive your rook? Or do you hold the small big push in case one tries to hop in, cross, and take out the rook? You revive yourself, Fred? Yeah, baby. Pick yourself up, dog. You got your small big guy. Well, reviving the rook makes no sense. He has rook armor. He can literally do it himself. And peeking a cowley is one of the best ways to just get absolutely plowed. So... Peeking the Cali is probably the worst situation. I think even sprinting over and reviving the Rook might be a better idea, and that's a terrible idea. So we're not going to do either of those things. We are just going to hold Small Bakery and pick up a kill for ourselves uh, while he's reviving. And you remember how I said peeking the Cali is the worst option you can do? Well, that's exactly why we're just going to go and do it two seconds later uh, because we have man advantage and we should throw our bodies away and throw our lives away. So now we're at 1 HP, and uh, this 4v2 should be, it should be, we should wrap it up okay, right? Right? Small big door swinging. You knocked him. You knocked yeah, him. So you can tell I overstayed my welcome and prep. Because I was pushed up so far, I wasn't actually able to retreat from that Cali pushing in with the pocket F2. So one bullet and I'm dead because I tanked that Cali sniper bullet earlier like a moron. So now I've left my team in a 2v2 which is not a great move, especially since there's 45 seconds on the clock. The other team could win this very easily. So next time, I would say, yeah, definitely back up once you got that 4v2. I wanted to help the Rook, but he was a bit of a goner at that point, and I probably should have just left him to play for his life, and that way I could play the prep in the red entrance since there's only those two entrances into the site later in the round. So a bit of a mistake, but nothing that we can't learn from. At this point, I'm feeling really good about my aim. We have the Rook, so our survival chances are higher having that Rook armor on. So my logic and reasoning led me to pick Doc. I don't think I thought about it very deeply, but having that P90 is, it's just a headshot machine in my opinion. I love this gun, so I just wanted to have some fun in overtime and having fun will always be the best strategy of them all. Unless your fun consists of throwing the game. Then in that case, that's a terrible strategy, obviously. So we start this round off the exact same way. We play in bakery, get rid of some drones, get a potential kill if they play overly aggressive, and then we fall off once we have done that. We're learning from our mistakes, and we're going to back up and actually hold prep this time instead of being overly aggressive on the bakery door for too late into the round. So we wasted a minute worth of time, got a few drones, and we can even pick off a guy who's entering the building a little too sloppy, and that's Jazzman again. Jazzman, get pooped on. Get, 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 get dunked on, gamer. Can we get some L Jazzmans in the comments? Just kidding, I, I love you, Jazz. I love him. He's, he's my friend, guys. Come on, we're just, I'm pranking. I'm, pr I'm pranking. I'm just getting the balls, you know? Tickling them. 
get them jumpy. The other thing we're gonna do is once we get that kill, we're gonna fall off and play a different angle. We don't want them to know what angle we're holding. So by getting the kill and switching our position, they're not gonna know exactly where I am. And then I also have the suppressor to help out with that. One was called out small bake who you just tech out. But at this point, you know, there's at least two more in bakery. Thermite's there and you heard another gun go off. So you know, there's at least two there. And then your teammates are watching the rest of the map. You don't have to worry about the rest of the map. You just have to focus on the fact that they have bakery and small bakery control. So are you gonna play it passive and wait for them to actually push into site to kill them? Or are you gonna peek the breach and play overly aggressive in this 4v3? Well, up until this point, you kind of understand that your teammates are not really the best shooters in the world. So you should probably not only stay alive, but get some kills in order to stop them from getting absolutely pooped on. So playing aggressively right here isn't a terrible idea. Plus you don't have utility to actually stop the plant if they go for it. So getting a pick and picking someone off is gonna be really important in order to help your team and actually be able to win this round. So I think it's fine to play aggressively, especially when you're already fragging out and already slamming the other team. We're going for the clip, which lines me right up with Rook and allows him to pre-fire me in the head, but I saved Rook's life in the process. So maybe the game is still good. Damn. This guy wins a win. And all of a sudden the 4v1 turns into a 1v1, but Mute clutches up. We're good boys, we're good. The game, the round is safe. It doesn't matter. Let's forget that we almost threw because we didn't. Of course, playing a lot more passively there, forcing the plant and staying alive is going to be the best option. However, I am also a content creator and I'm going for the clip, dude. I'm having a great time. I'm feeling myself. Who cares? Who ca if I lose, I'm, gonna, I'm still going to take responsibility, but I'm not going to be upset because that the, the, those two like it does make sense to be upset like you can go for the clip but don't be upset when you lose if that makes sense now at this point all three of our attack strategies have just simply not worked even when we played the finca yes we won the round but my teammates were all dead i was in a 1v3 i managed to clutch a 1v3 somehow so we still have to try and figure out a way to actually win this round as a team and actually make something happen. So what would you do in this situation to help your teammates stay alive, maybe get a couple picks earlier in the round, or just be aggressive? Do you pick Ash and run in with no drone? Do you do it with Blackbeard? Do you bait for kills? What What is your plan in this situation? What do you do? Well, that is a fantastic question. And honestly, I don't have the answer for you. In my situation, I said, I'm gonna run blitz. I'm gonna go blitz, get in the building and try to get a pick or two early off the start which I also said live on stream. So perhaps this guy was stream sniping, but when I went to go in the building, he was sitting in the exact corner that countered my push because I was gonna rush white and try to get a kill, but I ended up just getting shot in the back along with my teammate. And that's a rough start to the attacking round in overtime. The user is no longer in possession. And for this final round, I'm not gonna play smoke again, but I am gonna play what I think to be the second best or one of the top three solo queue defenders which is Legion. Garfield played him over on his channel when we did a little challenge about a week ago, and that was a lot of fun. But I do think Legion is very, very strong. So I'm gonna bust him out for this final round, and hopefully we can win this game five to four. This should also slow down the aggression that that other team is bringing, and the goo mines are perfect information for what's actually going on, allowing me to make the plays and have that secondary shotgun for side setup. And after 50 seconds, my entire team is dead yet again. So you're in a 2v5, you know one's in mining, and the rest of the information is kind of sporadic. They could be downstairs, they could be on the skylight red, like skylight and red is pretty much always guaranteed that they're on the hatches or on the skylight. But all you really know is they could be in the basement and they could be in mining. So what are you gonna do in this situation? Well, you absolutely have to get the kills back. So fighting this mining guy is step number one. We take him out, which is fantastic, but now the yings are coming down from the skylight, meaning they could be going for a plant at any second. And I don't really have anything to stop the plant besides impact grenades and my gun. I have to be careful though, because they could already be in the site. So I'm gonna take it easy, sit still, chill out and wait for some more info before making a decision. Once the smoke grenades start coming down, it's safe to assume that they might be going for a plant now. So I gotta work my way towards it in order to be able to stop it. Being blinded by the second candela allows me to just hide in the smoke grenade. I didn't see the smoke grenade if they push through off the candela, let's say the Ying wants to take cocktail control, she's gonna walk right past me because I'm hiding in her smoke grenade, which allows me then push forward and stop the plant if that's the case. So at this point, you can actually hear the case open up and start planting. So do you charge the diffuser? and kill him before the plant gets down? Do you hide in cocktail and hope that that ying push to try and pick her off? Or do you push under the skylight and try to ninja defuse? Those are really your three options. You could bait for kills, try to stop the plant, or try to sneakily defuse it after he plants, which is absolutely insane and that will never happen in Champion. But it could happen in your lobbies if you're like, 
if you're like low rank and they won't hear, that's that would be insane. No, the only option here is to stop the plant because it is planted under the skylight. If the bomb gets planted, you are never going to win that round. The skylight players have an absolutely insane advantage on you. Killing them off the skylight is nearly impossible. So stopping the plant here is the only option you have to push. And that's just a small mistake by the enemies that nobody is actually covering it, but it allows me to get the kill, get the diffuser down, and now it's a 2v3 situation where we could actually win. So you know Deimos is top white because you just saw him. The call out is one is new hatch, and there could be another one somewhere around the shop piano area. Your teammates in freezer and also getting tracked by Deimos. Do you push up and try to kill the Deimos, or do you work under new hatch and try to kill the guy there? Remember, it is a little risky because you do have the guy that could potentially be in shop as well. Waiting for the Deimos here isn't a bad play because if he does decide to push your teammate, you could either do some chip damage on him or maybe even kill him and hopefully your teammate can help you to get that kill. But the Deimos never comes and it turns out that last guy is actually in bathroom. So now's their opportunity to try and make a play on the guy on new hatch because you know he's alone. You manage to take him out and now you're in that 1v2 situation with one HP. You know the Bucks bathroom side and the Deimos is top white, so where do you go now? Well, because shop and new hatch are clear, you're able to actually push up under long bar and try to make a play on the bathroom guy. The trick to this is kill and move. You just got your kill in cocktail, so by going long bar, they're probably going to expect that you're still in that cocktail area. Deimos also just saw you there, so he's probably calling you out actively as you're pushing up under the skylight. This is prime opportunity to kill the guy that was bathroom. And that misinformation clearly worked out because it puts you in the 1v1 against Deimos, who's right about to get his, some wall hacks on your ass. So you better be ready. <coughs> oh, yo, he's blow. He's blow. Nice. Stay let him play. He's got damage. This is the point where I finally realized I actually had some goo mines in my pocket. So of I'll course I'm gonna throw those down right. just to get info if he tries to push up in whatever direction. Now we have another problem because Deimos has another scan and you are pushed up long bar in the middle of the open where he could easily wall bang you through that bar. So do you jump over to pillar and come back up white stairs? Do you back up while pre-firing shop door to try and get into a safer position? Or do you just push aggressively and hope that he doesn't hit you? Well, in this case, pushing aggressively is probably a bad idea because you are one shot. If he decides to cancel his charge and pull out the AK, you are dead instantly. Plus that pistol fires so fast that even if he is using the pistol, you're probably going to get clapped. Hopping over pillar has a little bit of risk to it because he could shoot you technically while you're jumping. And then if you give up the site, he has all of it for free while he still has wall hacks on you. So pushing back against them is gonna be really tough. So that leaves the only option at this point to back up and pre-fire shop door, hoping that he'll swing off those pings and that maybe you can take him out then. You see that he's going new hatch, allowing you to pre-fire at head level, taking out none other than Jazzman in the Deimos 1v1 to win the game, get the ace, and drop 19 kills on the other team. So that's how you do it, boys and girls. I hope you guys learned something, and let me know how you did with this quiz slash informative video. I don't, I don't know. What did you think? Did you guys enjoy? If you liked it, double thumbs up in the comments and like the video and subscribe. There also won't be a game on my game channel today. I'm still trying to figure out what I should upload there when I do these videos. So let me know what you think. I could also just upload full games from the stream or upload this entire game there if you wanted to see it. Let me know your thoughts on that as well because I do care about your input, but hopefully you guys learned something and have a good day. Bye-bye.